took both of these out of the clamps and I cleaned them up just a little bit so there were no high spots with that glue. So if you want to make a, a cutting board faster than I'm doing, you could always just glue it up in this pattern and if you like the finished pattern, not even include the chevron. Um, milling this lumber and gluing it up, I could have done in an hour. It was adding that de detail that is what took a couple extra hours. So right now this is a little under three quarters of an inch thick and my original calculations were a thickness of about five eighths, five eighths of an inch. So I have about an eighth of an inch to play with and I'm really only going to take off as much as I need to to get the surface clean. I'm going to take really small passes on the planer so I don't have to worry too much about chip out. Planed those down, they're the exact same thickness, and I also trimmed off this one edge, about an eighth of an inch of it on the table saw, so they have the exact same uh, width now too. So now comes the fun part, I'm going to take off this rough edge with my cross cutting sled, and then you're going to be able to see if that design is going to look cool, or if it's going to look like a turd. So I'm probably going to use my fence to uh, cut all those slats. I might use my cross-cutting sled. Um, I'm going to check to see if it's square first. The fence is going to be my best bet. Now this is not the safest cut when you have a large cantilevered piece going this way, but I cut plywood like this all the time and it's not as scary as some people make it seem. You just want to make sure you're not twisting this in any way, shape, or form and you definitely don't want to use the miter gauge in conjunction with the fence. So I have a good push stick and I'm going to slide it through. Now I want the final uh, thickness of this to be about an inch and a half so I'm actually cutting these at about an inch and nine sixteenths because this will also have to be planed again once it's re-glued in that end grain. So there's everything laid out, and you saw um, the wood was catching between my fence at the end, and it was becoming pretty dangerous. I actually cleared off this top the other day and used some wax, and since it's so cold in here, the wax didn't set up um, consistently, and I think I just have some residue around the blade, and it was getting caught on that. So I switched over to my cross cutting sled and that worked out fine. But the ones I cut on the table saw are a little bit smaller than the ones I did on the cross cutting sled, but this is gonna have to be playing down anyway. So I don't think that's gonna be a huge deal breaker. So this is all my pieces. I have one strip left over and this is actually right now longer than 16 inches, but I wanted to end on the same design, so I had to add this other piece in. For some odd reason, as soon as I move this end piece, it just looks too short to me, so I'm going to keep this one on there and go with that. Um, you could see from the camera, there really aren't a lot of hairline cracks. There's a couple of these little things right here, and those I could easily fill with some glue and some walnut shavings and you most likely won't even be able to tell it's there so I'm very happy with that and this little triangle pattern at the bottom really turned into a happy accident because that looks good as well so what I'm going to do is probably go eat lunch but then after that this will get glued together and once again let it set up overnight the other thing, lastly, I was worried about was screwing these up in two different sets. I was nervous about the pattern being off, but it seems to match fairly well.
it's the next day and I took these out of the clamps. These two burnt ones are the ones I cut on the table saw, which is why I switched over to the cross-cutting sled. And I wasn't able to clean up the glue on the bottom, but I was able to clean up most of the glue on the top. So that one's pretty clean. So this glued up fairly square. Um, there is some undulation on the top. But I think that is just because of some of the pieces I cut on the cross-cutting sled weren't perfectly square, which isn't a huge deal. I knew I was going to have to flatten this. Anyway, so what I think I'm going to do is there's multiple ways you could do this. I've seen people make sleds for their routers to do it. I'm probably not going to do that. That's a little um, bit of a time commitment for me because I don't already have one. So, especially on this side, I think I'm going to hit it with a belt sander and at the very least get off all this glue and flatten it out as much as possible. And then if the belt sander goes quick enough and it keeps a fairly flat surface, I'll probably just use that. I have some fine grit belts for that belt sander, but um, if it needs be, I, if, if it gets to the point where that's getting really tedious, I will probably pop this in my planer, and I know that there's um, many schools of thought on that, but I've seen enough people do it, and probably more people that I know that specifically make cutting boards that send them through planers, that it's worth giving it a go. And this is going to be a one-sided cutting board, so I could always practice on the bottom, and if there is some chip out, it won't be a huge deal because you won't really see the bottom. So the belt sander worked fairly well and quicker than I thought it would. This is the what I'm assuming is going to be the top side because it came out flatter during the glue up and that actually looks pretty good. Um, this is the bottom side, this is the one that had all the glue on it, and once again pretty good. Unfortunately these ones I cut on the table saw are just shorter than these other ones, so I could probably spend easily an hour and a couple pads getting this to the height. So I am going to try um, sending it through my planer. There also is a very very slight bow in this that I would like to take out, and that's probably because I didn't use top side calls on this. I couldn't really get the clamps on it yesterday. And um, so what I'm doing to try and make this successful is I did hot glue two pieces of scrap poplar to the front and the back. That's probably the places I'll most likely experience tear out and I'd rather have it tear out on these than the piece. Um, I have fairly new blades in here. I know people usually switch out their blades before doing this, but these ones are pretty new. I'm going to try them out and if it... Um, does start going wrong I might switch them out and try them again and I'm going to be taking very very small passes like less than 160 less than 130 second even very very small passes the other thing to think about with these um, planers if you if you don't have long um, extension outfeed tables is you'll have to worry about snipe which is a tendency for the blade to kind of get stuck on this back edge because as the piece travels it will kind of tip off the edge um, on smaller boards like this with this plane I haven't had any real issues with that so I'm not super concerned about it when I do send long boards through there I do get that and that's why you should always overestimate stuff but I'm not super concerned about it for something of this size. So I'm going to cross my fingers and start sending this through. So I snuck up on this very slowly by getting it just to the point where the wheels would connect and send this through the piece. The first 20 so or times I sent it through, it wasn't really cutting anything off. But now I've got it where you could see pretty much this whole middle section is plain, and I just have some high spots in the back, and then obviously these low ones in the front from the table saw. So I'm going to end up taking this whole board down to um, remove all of these 
dark marks from the table saw. So honestly, if I didn't have these pieces from that, this side would most likely be done. Um, I'm experiencing no tear out whatsoever, but I am taking extremely shallow passes. I'm doing like 1 64th practically. One rotation of that wheel, I'm moving it like 8 to 10 times. So it is taking a little bit of time, but the nice thing about the plane is So that's that finished side. Uh, I experienced no tear out. This was the back edge, and if I didn't have that piece of popper there, I definitely think I would have lost some material on this back edge. You could see it's a little fuzzy in the video. The other nice thing is, if you flip it over, it's perfectly flat now. So the top part is the one that had that the high sides of the bow. This had the bulbous side of the bow. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing to this side. Very small passes. Just measured it. Right now I'm about an inch and nine sixteenths. So this will probably end up being about that inch and a half that I wanted, which is nice as well. So I already filled the back sides cracks and I'm using a mixture of epoxy and I have two piles of sawdust, one a little darker for the spots that hit the cherry, and one a little lighter for the spots that hit the maple. And the only one that's really kind of showing up on the camera that I could see is this one right here. Um, they're just little spots that need to be filled. And I'm using the epoxy because if I use epoxy, not only is it strong, but it will be pretty much set up in 5 to 20 minutes and I could send this back to the planer and get it back to where it is. You could also use wood glue for this in the same method. It will just take a lot longer to dry. all this set up for a little bit and now I'm going to send both sides back to the plane. It should probably only take like one or two passes. Um, before this got really hard I went through with the uh, junky chisel and scraped off a lot of excess so there's not a lot of excess gum. It's all pretty flat and it might look like there's a ton of little spots on here but I kind of got super crazy with putting it anywhere I think might need it. There's really only a couple little spots on either side that were big enough gaps to warrant the epoxy, but I just kind of put it, put it everywhere. To finish off all the edges, I'm going to be using that same uh, cross-cutting blade I have in there. I think that's a 60 or even an 80 tooth blade, and that's what's giving me all these nice clean cuts on here. So I'm just going to square this up on my cross-cutting sled, and I'm going to leave these poplar pieces on there. I don't want to knock anything off trying to get it off that hot glue I use is actually fairly strong so I'll cut it off all at one time. So at this stage, if you wanted to be done with this, you like it as is, you could final sand it and put some oil on it, which is my preferred uh, method to coat cutting boards and be done with it. But I'm going to do a couple more things to this. And at this point, it, you kind of reach personal preference or even what the customer wants. The first thing I'm going to add is a juice groove around the whole inner edge of this. I'm going to come in about an inch. It's kind of hard to go in and route this beautiful top that you just made, especially since routers sometimes do take chips out of things. However, if anyone's used cutting boards to cut up, especially roasts or steaks or anything like that, and you don't have a juice groove on that board, it just makes a complete mess. There's a reason why they're on there. So I am going to add that. And then another thing I see people do a lot is they'll put handles on there. And that is a nice additive if you want this to sit flat. But again, personal preference. Um, usually most people's 
countertops or stone or tile or something that has a very smooth finish. And if you're really going to town on some vegetables or something on the top of this board, it has a tendency to glide all over the place. Now you could use those rubber mats underneath of it, but I think for me, I'm gonna put some rubber feet on the corners. It will keep it in place, and it will also add um, a spot underneath the board for you to pick it up as well. So instead of putting handles, I'm gonna be putting those feet. I don't have those feet in my shop, so that is not gonna be a part of this video, but those are just something that you would buy at the store and um, put on the bottom. This is the jig I came up with to make that juice groove, and it looks a little um, extreme, and honestly it kind of is, but I saw someone do something similar to this a while ago, and one of the platforms I look at, it was either YouTube or Fine Woodworking or one of those places, and I just feel like it's going to be a foolproof way to get that juice groove without having to worry about angles and lining up the corners or anything like that. You could do this on your router table, but you're kind of dropping it on the blade and it's going to be upside down. So I just think this is going to be easier. So this is the bit I'm using. It's kind of this like little rounded cove bit. And all I did was I had an original mark about an inch from my edge. I placed my router on top of that had my router sitting like that and I just took a tape measure and measured from the edge of my board to the edge of my router. Now if you have one of these flat sided routers I would suggest measuring to the rounded side because the rounded side will go around your corners. That measurement was two and a quarter. I just took some scrap plywood I had and cut four pieces and nestled this board in between that number which gave me the perfect offset to cut that juice groove. Once I had that, I just took some more scrap um, plywood, I made sure it was tall enough so it would hit the fence of my router, and then went around the perimeter with that, screwing it in from the bottom, so now I have a nice carriage. To make sure that this was going to work, because like I said, it can be a little terrifying um, routing into your brand new cutting board, I had this just the tip of this just sticking out from the fence of my router and I went around the whole perimeter and it marked a groove but you couldn't really see it so I covered it with pencil. You could see that that is now going to be just about perfect. It goes through this piece evenly and it's off the edge evenly. And then I set the depth of my router and I'm going to make um, probably four or five very very light passes around here because this is not the best brand of router bit and cut that groove. So that is done and that could come out of here. And the nice thing about this jig is, is now that I have it, I made it out of scrap so I'll probably keep it. And even though it won't work if I change the size of the board, these L's will always um, coincide to that router. So these will always be useful. I just might have to change the size. But if I do make these again, um, this is, I do really like this size, I would keep it, and then this would become much more versatile than just a one-off. Now for the chamfer on the edge, I'm going to be taking off the smallest, smallest, smallest amount. It's really just to get rid of this sharpness here and round over the corners. This is that top with the juice groove and I kind of wish I would have went and got a nicer bit because getting these burn marks out um, is not any fun and I kind of figured out that might be why people don't like putting these juice screws on there because sanding the end grain in that groove just takes forever. So I don't think that will be finished by the time um, 
I want to post this video so I'm just going to flip it upside down and finish sand it and then put oil on that side and the process will be identical for this this side when after I finish sanding it. So I've pretty much had my fill of sanding for the day. I took both surfaces to 120. It's super smooth. Um, I'm going to coat it with some mineral oil and then I'm going to be away for the weekend. When I come back I'll probably sand it a little bit more, take down some of the grain that was raised from the oil, and then uh, I'm probably going to get a special Dremel bit to clean up that juice groove. So these are three products that will work on this. I haven't used this one in a while, but it's uh, I got this on Amazon. This one they sell at Home Depot. This one's good. It's a butcher block conditioner. And recently, this one I got from a company off Instagram. It's Walrus Oil. People on Instagram have been using this stuff. I've used it on a couple things, and I really like it. I'm probably going to use it on this one. And there's multiple things you can do this cut these cutting boards. I like oil finishes in general. Make sure they're food grade, like this one will say. Right on the bottom, it says food grade mineral oil and natural waxes. I like these ones because... The ingredients aren't actually on this can, but if you look them up, there's a couple cool things in there, like um, I believe there's beeswax in that one. So you just flood the surface with it, and then you'll just keep putting it on until the wood can't really take any more. But I'm going to put on a liberal first coat, and then like I said, let it sit, and then continue sanding it. But in general, um, this, is, this is pretty much the end of this product project. So like I said, I'm going to let this stuff soak in over the weekend, and then I have a little more sanding to do on it, and I have to clean up those juice grooves. But this is basically what that finished board is going to look like, and put, with the rubber feet on it, it'll be lifted off the table. Not as high as it is now, but similar to that. So I'm fairly happy with it, mainly because it turned out that everything fit in place. Um... I'm one of those weird woodworkers that is not a huge fan of the contrast between walnut and maple. It's just not my favorite. Um, the end grain of the two doesn't look as bad on this, but in my original plan I wanted the maple to be swapped. Actually, let me think of how I want it. I think I wanted the cherry to be swapped with the walnut so the cherry was always against the maple and the walnut would have only been against the cherry but I needed a three and I think three quarter inch piece for these this one right here and I only had that in uh, maple so I had to swap the maple with the cherry but in general I like it and it's since it worked out it's something where it you could play with the designs of these with any sort by changing all of these widths and sizes. This is what that that set of bits would look like. So it would cut um, this little angled groove as well as the pointed groove at one time. And I it um, doesn't have the measurements here, but I yeah, here it does. You could do half inch to an inch. So if I was to make a bunch of these boards, I would definitely invest in this set, but to see if it would work, I wanted to try it out on the table saw, which was free.